The IMUC meeting is extremely important. I've been involved in this IMUC meeting since the very first one. There we had the idea of joining forces, not each having our own separate meeting, but actually getting together and discussing the patients that we see on a day in and day out basis. And I think this has grown and there's also other societies involved now that also, like the radiologists, the pathologists that are also involved. It's just so important that cases and that the patients are at the center and that they can only be at the center if they're discussed in a multidisciplinary way. I've been to every one of them, I must say, and I think that the meeting is getting better and better. I think one of the highlights is that we do have um, more specialists from um, more different groups involved this year and over the years it's been growing. The interaction has been fantastic. The interaction among the radiologists, the oncologists, the, radio, the radiotherapists, just from the first time we organized the meeting, the steering committee composed of people from ESMO, ESTRO, and EAU, we all worked together in a way to make it, with the scientific committee to make a really great program. One of the highlights was the um, lecture that we heard this morning by Professor uh, Carlos Cordon Cardo from Mount Sinai uh, Medical Center in New York, who gave us an excellent lecture on uh, systems pathology and showed us actual the actual stem cell dividing and I find that extremely exciting and interesting. In terms of um, uh, bladder cancer, we just heard an excellent lecture by Tom Powell about the new checkpoint inhibitors, this new immunotherapy in bladder cancer, and we're seeing really excellent results with that. I gave a lecture on adjuvant uh, chemotherapy in patients with bladder cancer and uh, we had very interesting results that have been published in the Lancet Oncology. So to conclude, there's a convergence of evidence in support of adjuvant chemotherapy and a strong likelihood that there will be level one data when we do the meta-analysis with the other two trials. I started out with, with, with the MVAC chemotherapy regimen in bladder cancer and honestly since that time, many years ago, there hasn't been anything better since then. But we do know that bladder cancer has a very high mutation rate, almost as high as that of lung cancer, non-small cell lung cancer, or melanoma, which means it creates neoantigens, which means it can become immunogenic, which is why it's responding to the new checkpoint inhibitors. And we're seeing patients who have failed um, standard classical uh, combination chemotherapy with cisplatin-based chemotherapy who are having remarkable responses with these new uh, immuno immunotherapeutic agents. I think we have a good chance of, of having some interesting breakthroughs with bladder cancer now. I think that uh, the same kinds of topics will, will be presented next year. We will have a, a lot more information on the checkpoint inhibitors by then. We here had a great uh, interesting discussion on oligometastatic disease and prostate cancer and that's a really hot topic that I don't think will even be resolved by next year.